Hi, this is Allison Satoff with Art for Elementary School Teachers. Our next project is a paper plate weaving. You need a paper plate, tape, scissors, a little piece of pipe cleaner, and a bead, a nice big bead for decoration. All right, so to get started, you're gonna take your scissors and your paper plate, and you're gonna cut nine notches into the paper plate. So you're just gonna cut a little triangle into the plate, you need nine. Has to be an odd number. If you have more than nine, it's okay as long as it's an odd number. So you could have 11 or 13. I feel like nine works out just fine with this size plate. The next thing that's going to happen is you're going to cut some strings that are longer than your plate. So it needs to be about an inch longer on each side. Cut about seven strings. One of your strings is going to go through the bead. The string doesn't want to go through the bead very well because we're using yarn. It's kind of fuzzy and it sticks to the wood of the bead. So I'm just using a pipe cleaner to help push the string through the bead. Once you get the bead on, you're just going to lay the bead across your paper plate and put the ends of the string through the notches and then tape it down on the back. So you just need to put a piece of tape on each end. Grab another string, put it across your plate and tape it down on the back. Keep doing this until the back is covered, not covered, but until you have a string in every single notch. You have to have an odd number of notches for this to work. So one notch is actually gonna have two strings in it and that's perfectly fine. It has to work that way. So you can see that two of the strings are going through one notch. That's okay because there's an odd number of notches. Push your bead to the center and then grab the color that you started with. You actually don't have to grab the same color that you started with. It could be a different color. It doesn't matter. You can change colors as often as you want. So I'm going to take my string. The paper plate is going to work as our loom. The strings that we just tied onto the paper plate are the warp. And then the string that I'm getting ready to use to weave around the bead is called the weft. I'm 
going to tie my weft onto my warp. I'm just tying it on in a double knot and I'm gonna scoot it toward the center. I'm now gonna start weaving over one, under one, over one, under one, all the way around and around and around. This weaving technique is called tabby. So I'm just gonna start weaving. When you weave, you have this one space that has two strings that are going into one notch. Keep these two strings together all the time. So if you go over, you have to go over both of them. These two have to stay together. So you're just gonna weave over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, all the way around. At first it's gonna look a little messy, but it'll straighten itself out as you go along. You're gonna try to force your bead to come up through the center of your weaving. You want the bead to end up on top. This little extra piece of string is called selvage. And it's just extra, it's string that we tied with, and you can tuck it underneath as you go along. So I'm just gonna keep going over, under, over, under. With the tabby technique. As you go along, if you want your center, if you want the center of the weaving part to land off to the side, it's okay. Or you can make it land right in the center, it doesn't matter. As you work on this, these two strings that, were sep that are going through the same notch, they'll start to cling together and become one piece. I'm gonna keep working. When you're ready to tie on a new color, you just cut the string that you finished using, find your new color, take the two ends and put them side by side. Wrap the two strings around your fingers so that you have a loop and then stick the two ends through the loop so that it looks like this. I'm gonna pull it nice and tight and then trim it past the knot. You don't wanna trim it too short or your strings will come untied. Grab a little bit of string and cut it. Continue the same weaving technique over, under, over, under tabby with your new color.
You'll just keep going until you're ready to change colors. I'll, I'll show you one more time how to change colors. So I'm gonna tie on blue. I'm just gonna trim the pink. Take the pink and the blue, put the two strings side by side, wrap them around your fingers so that you make a little loop. Stick the two ends through the loop and pull it nice and tight. Trim it, but don't trim it too short or it could come untied. Just take a little bit of blue and trim it. Then continue over, under, over, under. You don't have to fill the entire paper plate with string. Just keep going until you get the desired look. If you want to fill up the whole paper plate, you can. Some kids work really fast and it'll be good for their goal to be to fill up this entire area. Some kids work really slow and it's okay if theirs ends up tiny. I definitely would not penalize kids for not having as much string on their loom as other kids. Kids all work at different abilities. Sometimes your most academic student is not very coordinated in art. And other times you have students who are not very good academically, but they're amazing at art. So having a craft time during class is a wonderful opportunity for the kids who are really good at art, but possibly not good at other things like math or reading to excel and shine. So try incorporating art projects into your classroom as often as possible. When you do this, not only is it fun, but it exercises part of the brain that doesn't always get used. So there's one part of the brain that's used for math, memorization, and then there's another part of the brain that's for creativity. Give the kids a chance to exercise their whole brain. So like I said, you could stop here or you can keep going.